Hello, I'm Claire from Wild Ginger Running YouTube channel and this is the strength workout for ultra runners from my new book, The Ultimate Ultra Running Handbook. This is my first book, The Ultimate Trail Running Handbook. There's a link to that here and then when the ultra one comes out, I'll put that in the link up here as well. So strength work is probably one of the least favorite activities for ultra runners, but if you want to be injured less, if you want to be stronger, if you want to run more efficiently for longer and everything feel easier, on those long runs, then just doing half an hour of strength work per week is absolutely fantastic. If you can't do half an hour, just do 10 minutes. Anything is better than nothing. So if you can only fit in a few exercises each week, I'm gonna first take you through the three essential moves that you can do whilst brushing your teeth, whilst watching telly, whilst the kettle boils. Then there's six more moves that I'm gonna take you through for the more dedicated amongst us that have got 10 minutes to spare maybe even 20, maybe even half an hour. So you don't need any equipment as such to do these moves, but we are gonna be working on strength. So as soon as you can perform these moves with good form, then you wanna start adding some weight because we wanna be doing about eight to 10 maximum reps of each of these exercises rather than doing loads of them because that's endurance and that's what you're doing when you're running you're building endurance but we want to be working on strength so you want to be using the heaviest weight that you can possibly manage to do those eight exercises with good form um, eventually just do start off with one set of eight of all of these moves that i'm going to show you now but then build up to doing them twice three times maximum of five times if you can spare the time just before we start, this video is sponsored by Saw Running. I'm wearing their kit just now. I really like Saw because of their eco-friendly ethos. So they use the most sustainable manufacturing processes that they can, and they use factories in Europe to cut out the mileage. I'll link to Saw's whole range just here, but I particularly like this t-shirt. Like, I love a bright colored t-shirt. It's super light. It's also really quick at wicking sweat away from your body. It feels really comfy when it's on and it dries super quickly. So I'm a big fan of this t-shirt. I also really love the leggings as well. Um, I wear them all the time, especially in the winter. They're so comfy. So thank you to Saw for sponsoring this film. Let's crack on with some exercises. Firstly, let's just cover those essential three exercises that you can fit into your daily life really easily if you don't have time for a dedicated session. If you're brushing your teeth, you're presumably at the top of your stairs. Uh, don't take any liability for anyone falling down the stairs, but if you get maybe on the bottom step, ball of your foot on the step and heel down, lift the other foot off and holding the banister or something for balance, um, you wanna push up and all the way down, nice and slowly. And you can pop a backpack on or hold uh, some weight to make this harder. And you wanna do eight of these. And on the other leg, imagine you're brushing your teeth at the same time. Now for the bent leg, same deal with the foot, but this time bending the leg slightly. So this isolates the soleus muscle rather than the gastrocnemius, which you've just been working. Up you go with the bent leg. One of your legs might feel a lot harder to do than the other. I'm certainly less strong on my left leg. On the other foot. The second exercise, this one you can do while you're watching TV. You want to put one of your feet back on the sofa or a chair. And it's called a Bulgarian split squat. And we're going to just drop down into a lunge position. Try not to let the knee go over the toe. So just wiggle your foot forwards a bit. I'm gonna do eight of these, nice and low. Pull your abs in there, pull your stomach muscles in. 
a good one for balance as well, this one. Arms out if you want balance. You can also hold a dumbbell or hand weights to make this one harder. And swap the legs. I'll just do it with dumbbells this one, just to demonstrate doing it with some weight. Just rest that foot behind there. Make sure you're balanced. Stand up straight, tummy in, shoulders down. Eight. There we go. The third exercise is one you can do whilst you're waiting for the kettle to boil. Especially if you're working from home, you'll need a resistance band. Um, if you don't have a set of resistance bands, I'll show you an alternative in a minute. But pop that round your ankles. So keeping that tension on the band there, you should start to really feel it in those glutes. This is a great one to do up and down your kitchen, up and down your hall. Till it really burns, like now. If it's too hard, if it's too easy, use a harder resistance band. I've got a set here, all different colors, all different strengths. Really, really useful bit of kit and doesn't take up a lot of room. If you don't have resistance bands, you can do this exercise by laying on the floor. Still while your kettle's boiling, it's taking a long time to boil this kettle. One knee on top of the other knee, legs bent, ankles together. And using this glute muscle here, put your hand on to check that it's working. Raise the leg up and down. Right, so those are the three essentials that you can just build into your everyday life. But if you've got 20 or so minutes, now I'm gonna show you some more exercises that will be really, really beneficial to your ultra running. So the first one is squats. We're gonna do eight of these. Squeeze those glutes together, squeeze those bum muscles together as you come up and push the hips forwards. Stick that bum out, nice straight back. Then we've got some walking lunges, which you can also do with your weights or your dumbbell across the shoulders. Um, I, if I start to walk, I'm gonna walk off the screen. <laughs> so I'll just demonstrate them to you here. The right leg uh, first, forwards and left leg back. Eight of these. Keep breathing. Abs engaged, shoulders straight and back, back straight. Shoulders nice and relaxed. Swap the legs. Same thing on the other side. Knee just a centimetre from that floor. Eyes looking straight ahead. It's also quite a good one for balance, this one. Right, you might start to find a few things are starting to burn now, that's good. That's what we want. If you aren't finding the, these exercises difficult in any way, up the weight. The next one is step up. So I would advise to do this outside if absolutely possible, like on a bench. I might go off the end of the screen, <laughs> but we're gonna do eight of these on one leg then swap the legs. Use dumbbells as well for this, like up, like this. That's number two, number three. It's also good for balance, this. Four. And swap the legs. Four. 
forgotten how many I've done now. <laughs> one last one. Probably the eight. <laughs> okay, now, oh, we're gonna lay down on the floor now and do some glute bridges. Should be feeling a little bit breathless by now if you're doing it right, if you've got the weights heavy enough. So not only is this good strength, it's also a bit of a good cardio workout. And I've forgotten to start my watch, what an idiot. Right, watch is on now. <laughs> Glute bridges, so we're gonna lie down on the mat. <sighs> and knees bent. Head down and engage your abs. Stop yourself going for a wee, stop yourself farting. That engages your pelvic floor and then push up through the hips like that and down. Now this one can seem a bit easy for some people. So if it's too easy for you, one leg out and down. Let's do eight of these. Three. Try and keep those hips level. Seven, and last one. <coughs> Other leg, swap the leg. Try and keep those hips level. Remember to engage that pelvic floor and hence the tummy button as well. Pull that tummy button right into the spine to engage those abs. Six. Okay, Russian twists, the next one. We do a lot of forwards and backwards movements in the strength work that we've just done and in our running itself. So it's good to include some twisting strength work to just account for the uneven terrain and the twisting that we'll do on the trail. Slightly lift those feet from the ground and tense those abs, pull that tummy button in, stop yourself going for a wee, stop yourself farting pelvic floor and then tap down each side with the weight. Yep, yeah, I need to get a heavier weight for this one. So that just strengthens up your core there with that twist. And the final exercise that's in my book, I will give you one bonus exercise just for watching this film as well. But the final exercise in the book is deadlift. So if you don't have a barbell like this one, you can just use a backpack full of books or bottles of water. You wanna just be able to see your toes just coming, poking out from the bar there. Bend over, grip the bar. Bend the knees slightly so that the bum feels like it's up in the air and your back is straight. Tense the abs, so pull your tummy button in to your spine. Stop yourself going for a wee, stop yourself farting. That's everything engaged down there. And then breathe out, in and on the out breath, lift up into the deadlift. And breathe out to put the weights down. That is one deadlift. So we're gonna do eight of those, one. Two, three, four, five. Seems easy at first, <laughs> it gets hard. Six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's one round of all those exercises. And I'm just gonna give you one bonus exercise that I didn't put in the book, uh, just because of lack of space really, but this is one of the ones I really like to do because this is a little bit more dynamic than the other ones. So you start at the edge of the mat here, it's called a plank walkout. Oh, you fold down, uh, touch just beyond your toes, and then walk the hands out into a plank position. Then you can do a press up here if you want, and then you walk back to standing, or you can incorporate a jump as well, get a bit of plyometrics going in there. So I really like doing that one, it's just, just a fun one <laughs> that I like doing. So I'm just gonna do this one as a bonus. So this is number two. It also, if you're not very good at press-ups, it spaces them out a bit and makes it a bit more fun. If you're really struggling with the press-ups, get on your knees, do a box press-up like that, and come back again. And up, and down, and 
So I hate doing press ups all in a row. This one just space them out, make them a bit fun. I think this is number four. Remember to breathe. The five. Oh, Why is sticking out? Six. Oh. Seven. Gets hard towards the end. That's how you know you've worked hard. Oh, last one. There we go. Oh, and a walk back. There we go. Oh, well, well done for doing those seven exercises and those three essential ones at the start too. If you can do this video once a week, then that's absolutely fantastic. My recommendation now would be to scroll back to the start of those three essential exercises and do them all again, another set and then do one more set as well when you become familiar with them. Keep the weight manageable, but hard. So you wanna be doing reps, six, seven, eight, must be feeling really hard by then, but don't ever do it with so much weight that you can't perform the exercise with good form. If you want more exercises and workouts, click here and buy the book, it will be out next year. I'll link to the book that is currently out. This has got some different strength moves in it. So if you're um, wanting some different workouts, mix it up, then have a look at this book here as well. This is the Ultimate Trail Running Handbook and it's got training plans from 5K to 50K on trails. The Ultimate Ultra Running Handbook will have training plans from 50K to 100 miles. So check it out, hope you like it and good luck in your next race. Honestly, do these once a week and you will reap the rewards. Thank you so much to Saw as well for sponsoring this film. As I said, I really like this t-shirt. It's super light, really breathable, dries really quickly. I can feel myself really sweaty now, but I feel super comfortable still in this t-shirt. And the leggings as well. I never usually wear long leggings inside because I get too hot too quickly, but these are really breathable. Yet, I'm also confident enough to wear these on the arc of attrition 50 this January when it's gonna be really, really cold. So. Really liking the saw gear. Check it out here and have a look at their trail running range and I will see you on the trails.